Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Prayer. On behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in Chicago, Illinois, I'm Brother Ron Fox. On this Tuesday in the 15th week after Pentecost, and today we commemorate John Henry Hobart. John Henry Hobart was one of the leaders who revived the Episcopal Church following the first two decades of its independent life after the American Revolution, a time that has been described as one of suspended animation. Born in Philadelphia on September 14, 1775, Hobart was educated at the Universities of Pennsylvania and Princeton, graduated from the latter in 1793. Bishop William White, his longtime friend and advisor, ordained him as deacon in 1798 and as a priest in 1801. After serving parishes in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Long Island, Hobart became assistant minister of Trinity Church, New York City, in 1800. He was consecrated assistant bishop of New York on May 29, 1811. Five years later, he succeeded Bishop Benjamin Moore, both as diocesan bishop and as rector of Trinity Church. He died at Auburn, New York, September 12, 1830, and was buried beneath the chancel of Trinity Church in New York City. Within his first four years as bishop, Hobart doubled the number of his clergy and quadrupled the number of missionaries. Before his death, he had planted a church in almost every major town of New York State and had begun missionary work among the Oneida tribe of Native Americans. He was one of the founders of the General Theological Seminary and the reviver of Geneva, now Hobart College. A strong and unbending upholder of church standards, Hobart established the Bible and Common Prayer Book Society of New York. It was one of the first American scholars to produce theological and devotional manuals for the laity. These tracts, as they were called, and the personal impression he made on the occasion of a visit to Oxford were an influence on the development of the Tractarian movement in England. Both friends and foes respected Hobart for his staunch faith, his consuming energy, his personal integrity, and his missionary zeal. The Lord is glorified in his holy ones, Come, let us adore him. For those of you who use the Book of Common Prayer to pray the office, morning prayer begins as usual on page 80, followed by the Venite on page 82. Today's Psalms are 62, 63, and 64, beginning on page 669. The canticles are 13 and 18 on pages 90 and 93. For the vast majority of us, the easiest and most accessible way to pray the office is to use the app provided for by my community, the Brotherhood of St. Gregory, which can be found at dailyoffice.app. If you want to ensure you're set for the 30-day Psalter, the traditional Lord's Prayer, and the general thanksgiving. And to get to the settings, you go into the upper right-hand corner, click on the three small bars, just a matter of scrolling through the options till you get to those particular sections that I just mentioned. It's our tradition and custom here at Church of the Atonement to light a candle. Regardless of where we may be, signifying the presence of God in our midst. Mine has already been lit, but that's part of your practice. I urge you to do that now. We'll take just a moment and begin with morning prayer on this Tuesday in the 15th week after Pentecost and the commemoration of John Henry Hobart. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 62, 63, and 64, beginning on page 699 in the prayer book. 
For God alone, my soul in silence waits. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail me to crush me, all of you together? As if you were a leaning fence, a toppling wall. They seek only to bring me down from my place of honor. Lies are their chief delight. They bless with their lips. But in their hearts they curse. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales they are lighter than a breath. All of them together. Put no trust in extortion, in robbery. Take no empty pride. The wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. For you repay everyone according to his deeds. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory, for your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live. And lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed. And meditate you in the night watches. For you have been my helper. And under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. May those who seek my life to destroy it go down into the depths of the earth. Let them fall upon the edge of the sword and let them be food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All those who swear by him will be glad. For the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Hear my voice, O God, when I complain. Protect my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the mob of evil doers. They sharpen their tongue like a sword and aim their bitter words like arrows, that they may shoot down the blameless from ambush. They shoot without warning and are not afraid. They hold fast to their evil course. They plan how they may hide their snares. They say, who will see us? Who will find out our crimes? We have thought out a perfect plot. The human mind and heart are a mystery. But God will loose an arrow at them and suddenly they will be wounded. He will make them trip over their tongues. And all who see them will shake their heads. Everyone will stand in awe and declare God's deeds. They will recognize his works. 
The righteous will rejoice in the Lord and put their trust in him. And all who are true of heart will glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. In the 31st year of King Asa of Judah, Omri began to reign over Israel. He reigned for 12 years, six of them in Terzah. He bought the hill of Samaria from Shemer for two talents of silver. He fortified the hill and called the city that he built Samaria, after the name of Shemer, the owner of the hill. Omri did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. He did more evil than all who were before him. For he walked in all the way of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and in the sins that he caused Israel to commit, provoking the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger by their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Omri that he did, and the power that he showed, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Omri slept with his ancestors and was buried in Samaria. His son Ahab succeeded him. In the 38th year of King Asa of Judah, Ahab, son of Omri, began to reign over Israel in Samaria 22 years. Ahab, son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. And as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, he took as his wife Jezebel, daughter of King Ethbal of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. He erected an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. Ahab also made a sacred pole. Ahab did more to provoke the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than had all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days, Hiel of Bethel built Jericho. He laid his foundation at the cost of Abiram, his firstborn, and set up his gates at the cost of his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Joshua, son of Nun. Here ends the reading. Canticle 13, a song of praise, on page 90. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the world, imperial guard, and to everyone else that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I have been put here for the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my suffering and my imprisonment. What does it matter? Just this, that Christ is proclaimed in every way, whether out of false motives or true and in that I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in any way, but that by my speaking with all boldness, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ. For that is far better, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy and faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a, matter, in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, 
striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he, is at, he has graciously granted you the privilege of not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, that you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Here ends the reading. Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb, on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, we worship and praise dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed on page 96, followed by the Lord's Prayer and Suffrages A on page 97. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Revive your church, Lord God of hosts, whenever it falls into complacency and sloth, by raising up devoted leaders like your servant John Henry Hobart, and grant that their faith and vigor of mind may awaken your people to your message and their mission through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you with perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all the souls of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. We now come to the prayers on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement and the wider church. You may offer whatever prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings you have, either silently or aloud. If you have a particular prayer request, you can put it in the chat feature of this broadcast. In the lower right, <coughs> you see a little bubble. If you hover your mouse there, you see chat with everyone. Put your prayer request there. I will do my best to get to it through the course of the prayers, which are about to follow. During the week of September 10th, 2023, we pray for the healing and comfort of those for whom we now offer our prayers. For the sick, 
Phyllis, Graham, Mark, Eli, Destiny, Kay, Ron B, Jerry C, Brad, Mary, Killian, Dennis, Mary, Tom R, Ed, Thomas Priest, Susan T, former President Carter, Ken, Deacon, Mary, Michael, Presiding Bishop, Manny, Chris, Nancy, Jeff, Connie, Michael N, Carlos, Beryl, Roman, Mary Kay, Leslie, Jackie, John C, Jose, Patricia, Roy, Bernard, Rinaldo, Eddie, Donald, John, Tim, Jim, Priest, and all with COVID-19. And we would ask your special prayers this morning for Eddie, who is undergoing open heart surgery as we speak. For those needing special prayers, the families of those hospitalized or in nursing homes, especially Elizabeth and the Cristobal family, for all who mourn, especially the Waters family, for all victims of violence and crime, for all refugees and migrants, and for peace, especially in Ukraine, Sudan, Ethiopia, Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, Syria, Yemen, Myanmar, and Niger, and for the work of Care for Friends and Care for Real. For all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, Anthony, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners, especially Oscar Roy, Jorge, and Mingo. For members of our military services on active duty, Andre, Ricky, Owen, Max, Celeste, and Nate, for Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Dave and Amanda, our warden, and for the members of our vestry. For the birthdays of Albert Kim, Jerry DeMuth, Aaron Watson, Michael Spear, Lisa Martell, Rodel Di Ocampo, Jeff Lupschultz, and Rose Sengenberger, and in Thanksgiving for the birthday of Katrina. For the wedding anniversary of Tom and Ginny Helm, and uh, this Thursday, the 54th anniversary of the founding of the Brotherhood of St. Gregory. And we offer our prayers for the departed, remembering James Waters, Peter Bergman, the over 2,000 killed in the earthquake in Morocco, Gary Wright, Susan Wunsch, all victims of gun violence, all who have died of COVID-19, and at the anniversary of their deaths for Queen Elizabeth II, all who have who died in the attacks on our country at the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and United Airlines Flight 93 in 2001, Arthur Nielsen, Kenneth Kachi, Larry Fox, Linda Luddington, Richard Jones Crampton, Louis Hummeler, Alan Nichols, Edward Riley, priest and religious, and Eleanor Van Winkle. And we offer this prayer for the people of Ukraine. Lord of all the earth, be present with the people of Ukraine at this time of danger, fear, and conflict, and that wise and peaceable counsels may yet prevail, and give to all suffering nations the freedom they desire and deserve. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And that prayer comes to us courtesy of the people of St. Matthew's Westminster. May these and all our intercessions be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. The General Thanksgiving on page 101. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us to do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. That concludes morning prayer on this Tuesday in the 15th week after Pentecost and the commemoration of John Henry Hobart. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. 
We're here every morning on Google Meet at 8.30 a.m. Since it is Tuesday, this evening at 5.30, they will be evening prayer also on uh, Google Meet. On Wednesday and Friday mornings, there's a Mass at 7.30. Wednesday evening, a Mass at 6.30. Thursday, Mass at noon. Saturday morning, we have the Rosary at 9.30, followed by the Healing Mass at 10. And on Sunday, our usual round of services at 8, 9, and 11. Thanks so much for being here with us this morning in this uh, fall-like weather we're having here in Chicago. Have yourself a great day. Stay safe out there. Be well, everyone.